Hello there, I'm Alice. Yeah, a teenage girl, with a long straight black hair, wide hazel eyes, a bit big nose, but I love big noses, they're cute, haha. I love my life. But in a few months ago, I hated every single thing in it. Let me show you a bunch of memories of my life. This is a picture of me in Miami Beach. Oh God, look how happy I was. I met this cute pink fish there. I named it Chequitito, but unfortunately he was killed. Here's a picture of me in the garden. I was laughing and I felt so delighted this day, right before I got injured in my knee after I fell of the swing. Here's another happy picture of me. Oh, this one is not me, it's Clara. She's my twin sister. Mem, as you can see, we're identical twins. We may have the same face, but never the same personality. We were as different as day and night. Oh, sorry for ruining the surprise, but my lovely sister, Clara, is the one who killed my best friend fish, Chequitito, as she gave my poor fish tuna instead of the fish food when she already knew that fish don't eat tuna, fish do not eat fish. Poor Chequitito, she's also the one who left me in the swing when I told her to make it stop. But instead, she increased its speed until I fell of it, got injured, and cried for hours. We're 19 years old, and we live in a beautiful small village, known as Luminaria. It's nestled between towering mountains and lush forests. Here's a picture of us together. I believe that a picture is worth a thousand words as you can see. People always say that I'm like a beacon of light, my laughter like the tinkling of wind chimes, and I bring joy and happiness to the place, while Clara held an air of mystery, her gaze as deep as the starlit sky, her silence or smile scare people sometimes. Our village thrived on harmony and unity, the villagers marveled at our bond, often remarking on the harmony we brought to the village. However, as we grew older, our differences started to become more pronounced. I love life and colors. I love flowers a lot, especially roses. I love animals, and I love to dance under the rain. While all my sister Clara loved was black and spiders, she ever tortured the poor spiders. In our university, I was loved by all, my generosity and kindness drawing people to like moths to a flame. I spend my days tending to the village's gardens, my fingers coaxing vibrant flowers to bloom. I had an uncanny ability to heal both physical and emotional wounds, and my presence was like a soothing balm on troubled hearts. That's what everyone keeps telling me, and it always makes me so happy. On the other hand, Clara seemed to harbor a darkness within her. Her laughter held a hint of cruelty, and her eyes gleamed with secrets yet to be uncovered. She resented the attention I received and yearned to be the center of attention herself. Unbeknownst to anyone, Clara was honing my ability to mimic my behavior, capturing my essence, and using it as a mask to manipulate those around me. The whole drama thing started when, flashback, I woke up one morning feeling unusually weak and dizzy. As I struggled to sit up, my head spun, and a wave of nausea swept over me. Concerned, my parents rushed me to the doctor, who diagnosed me with a severe flu. You need to rest and stay in bed for a week, the doctor advised in a gentle voice. Reluctantly, I complied. I spent my days cocooned in blankets, watching raindrops slide down my windowpane, and listening to the soothing patter of rain. My mind wandered as I dreamed of returning to school, laughing with friends, and enjoying my favorite activities. My twin sister, Clara, was a stark contrast. While we shared the same physical features, our personalities couldn't have been more different. Emily was the mischievous one, always looking for an opportunity to stir up trouble. She resented my popularity and longed for the spotlight to shine on her instead. As I lay in bed, Clara saw an opportunity. With me out of the picture, she could step into my shoes and experience the attention she craved. So she concocted a plan to impersonate her twin sister, me, and make the most of the situation. The next morning, Clara appeared at my university, dressed in my colorful clothes and mimicking my mannerisms. Her heart raced with excitement as she interacted with my friends, who were oblivious to the switch. 
Clara relished the feeling of being at the center of attention, a stark contrast to her usual role in the shadows. As the days passed, Clara's impersonation grew bolder. She started to take liberties, making sarcastic remarks, and indulging in behavior that was unlike me. Unbeknownst to her, her actions were having unintended consequences. Teachers and friends began to notice my change in behavior, and whispers of concern spread through the halls. My best friend Mia felt uneasy. She sensed that something was off, but couldn't quite put her finger on it. One afternoon, she approached Clara, hoping to discuss my strange behavior. Clara's facade slipped for a moment, revealing her true nature, but she quickly recovered, deflecting Maya's questions with a convincing smile. As the week went on, Clara's impersonation grew more reckless. She got into arguments with teachers, can you believe that she even yelled at my favorite teacher, and threw my books on the floor in a rude way in front of him? just because he asked why I did not do the homework he asked for. She also skipped classes, pranked a fellow student, she stole money and lunch from the back bag of my friend Jack. She took the diaries of my Shay friend Casey and read them out loud in front of everyone in the hall. She exposed all her secrets, made fun of her, and threw some really silly jokes, and made everyone laugh at my poor friend Casey until she ran outside and cried a lot. Casey even refused to go out of her room again. The chaos she created reached a breaking point when the college dean called my parents to discuss my behavior. My parents were puzzled. They knew me well. They knew that their daughter is very responsible and respectful, and they couldn't understand the sudden change. Desperate to understand, the university decided to pay a surprise visit to me at home. When they arrived, they were met with an unexpected sight. I was in my bed, still pale and weak from my illness. Shocked and confused, they recounted the events of the past week to me. I listened with a mix of disbelief and anger. I was shocked and speechless. Why would my twin sister do this to me? What type of sister would do that? Once everyone left the house, I faced Clara. I was so mad at her, and I told her to go to my university. Tell the truth to everyone and apologize for all the terrible things she did. But Clara said, oh, then what? I'll still become the bad sister that everyone hates, and you will still be the one who gets all the love. Yes, I did all of that, and I impersonated you, but you know what? Ruining your life was fun. I do not regret it, and I'll never tell anyone the truth. No one will actually believe you if you said anything because you have no clue. They will think that you are just insane, Alice. Now get out of my face and go find a life, loser. But the one thing that Clara did not know about is that I recorded every single word she said on my phone. Sorry, Clara, I guess you were wrong. I do already have a clue. Determined to set things right, I hatched a plan of my own. I knew that only I could convince everyone of the truth. With Clara by her side, I returned to university the next day my friends and teachers looking on in astonishment. My presence silenced the whispers and confusion. I addressed my friends and teachers, explaining the impersonation, the illness that had kept me bedridden, and the events that had transpired in my absence. With honesty and grace, I opened up about my struggles, and my friends rallied around me. I made everyone listen to the record of Clara speaking and admitting that she really did that not me. As the truth emerged, Clara faced the consequences of her actions. She admitted her jealousy and regretted her choices. With time, she sought redemption by mending relationships and learning to value herself for who she was. The most important thing is that Clara apologized to me, but to be honest I think she apologized to me just because she was afraid of mom and dad, because they were so angry for what she did, and she know that they will punish her. I was still so mad at her because of all what she did. So simply I refused her fake apology. At that moment I wished that God replaces her. I wanted God to take her away and give me a good cute sister instead. My parents punished her and locked her in her room for a whole week. Everyone in the village was so mad at her. I do not want to seem evil or bad, but that was making me so happy. 
Seeing my evil twin sister facing the consequences of what she did made me feel so happy and comfortable, but that was never enough for me. I still wanted to get my revenge. I did not know what exactly I am supposed to do. Late one night, I logged into Clara's Facebook account, a mischievous glint in my eyes. I typed out a series of posts that painted Clara in a negative light. I posted about every bad thing she had ever done to me since we were little kids until today, as if she's typing that from her account and not me. My fingers trembled as I pressed the post button, unleashing a digital storm that would soon spiral out of control. The next morning, Clara awoke to a barrage of messages and notifications. Confused and shocked, she opened her social media accounts to find her reputation tarnished by hurtful comments, not just from people of our village, but from all over the world. Panic surged through her as she desperately tried to regain control of her online presence. As Clara worked tirelessly to undo the damage, I watched from the shadows, a mix of guilt and satisfaction churning within me. I had achieved my revenge and I thought I would be happy about it, but part of me was not. I felt really bad. I realized that I was mad at my sister, but I can never hate her. She's my twin sister who had no friends but only me. I realized what I did was so wrong and that I shouldn't have fought fire with fire. I immediately ran to Clara's room crying and admitting everything I did to her. I apologized a lot, but I was surprised when she forgave me at once and hugged me instead. A few minutes later, mom and dad came to our room and asked Clara about those posts. She lied and told them that it's probably an unknown hacker from the village. And she also told them that everything is in control now. Mom and dad hugged both of us, and I felt so calm and relaxed at that moment. But I felt so much guilt. My sister defended me in front of my parents, so I do not get punished when I totally did the opposite with her. After my mom and dad left, Clara told me that all of this would not have happened if she did not impersonate me. I hugged her and forgave her and told her how much I love her and how much I was wrong about her and that she's the best sister ever. I actually decided to help her get to the right way, to help her make friends, to show her how to study and get high marks, and the most important thing is how to behave and treat her friends and teachers. Clara started to have friends. Oh, and she finally stopped torturing the poor spiders, haha. She made an official apology to all my teachers, especially my favorite one. She bought Jack his favorite lunch and returned the money she stole from him back. Oh, and about Casey. It was really difficult to fix that, but Clara decided to punish herself in front of Casey just to forgive her. So Clara read her own diaries in front of everyone in our village, not just the university. They were so stupid and funny to be honest, haha. Eventually, Casey forgave her and decided to go out of her room, and she came back to university to attend all the classes again. This incident became a turning point for both of us, actually. My strength and resilience shone through, and she learned the importance of communication and authenticity. Clara, humbled by her mistakes, embraced self-improvement and found her own path to acceptance. From this day, me and Clara became not just twin sisters, but also best friends. I've always dreams of visiting Egypt. Clara surprised me buying two tickets for both of us to there. She became a whole new person. I really love her this way. We stood at the entrance of the Cairo International Airport, our eyes wide with excitement. We were about to embark on a once-in-a-lifetime journey to Egypt, a land of ancient wonders, vibrant culture, and captivating history. As we stepped off the plane and onto Egyptian soil, a wave of warm air embraced them. The scent of spices and the hum of the bustling city filled the air, making them feel as if they had stepped into a different world altogether. Their first stop was the Great Pyramids of Giza. Standing in awe before these towering monuments, we marveled at the sheer magnitude of human achievement. We wandered around the colossal stones, trying to comprehend the mysteries that surrounded these ancient structures. As our journey came to an end, we reflected on the incredible experiences we had shared in Egypt.
From the ancient wonders to the warm hospitality of the people, their trip had been nothing short of magical. We returned home with hearts full of gratitude, our bond as sisters stronger than ever, and our memories of Egypt forever etched in our souls. I'd also posted all these happy moments on social media to show the world how Clara is a good person, and she was so surprised seeing all those lovely sweet comments about her from different people all over the world. This is all I have ever wanted, oh, and here's a happy picture of us at the pyramids. In the end, it was my strength of character that prevailed. Through forgiveness and unwavering love, I helped Clara find her way back to the light. As the village was healed, Clara undertook a journey of redemption, using her mimicry for good and restoring the balance she had disrupted. It became a story of transformation and the power of love to heal even the deepest wounds. It taught the villagers of Luminaria that appearances could be deceiving and that forgiveness had the ability to mend even the most shattered hearts. Eventually, this story served as a reminder that even in the face of deception and betrayal, the bonds of sisterhood could endure and heal, paving the way for growth and redemption.